Detroit Homecoming has been made possible in part by Urban Science, guiding business through science. Make decisions by what you know, not what you think. And by the William Davidson Foundation, advancing the cultural, economic, and civic vitality of Southeast Michigan, the state of Israel, and the Jewish community. I'm coming up. I want the world to know. Y'all don't want me to sing up. <laughs> um, hey everybody, my name is James Chapman. I'm the Director of Entrepreneurship for the Quicken Loans Community Fund. Um, one of the biggest projects that comes out of that initiative is uh, Detroit Demo Day, which is a million dollar demo day and pitch competition for Detroit based companies to be able to take the stage and pitch for their chance to win anywhere between fifty and three hundred thousand dollars for their business as long as they're Detroit based or committed to relocating to, to, to Detroit. So if you guys want to get involved with that next summer shameless plug, um, go to DetroitDemoDay.com and, and check that out. We'd love to have you. Um, I'm also an entrepreneur and have the esteemed privilege of sharing the stage today with two fantastic entrepreneurs who are doing wonderful work in this region and uh, I'm excited to hear their stories and I think you guys are going to be really impressed by, by what they have to say. So without further ado, let's, let's jump right into it. Um, to my immediate left here is Steve Bozar. Steve is the co-founder and CTO of May Mobility. May Mobility is unlocking a better life today through self-driving transportation by partnering with urban planners, property managers, developers, and municipalities. They're building self-driving vehicles and mobility services that can transform the landscape of cities, making them more green, vibrant, and livable spaces. Uh, currently, their vehicles are on the streets of Detroit and navigating complex downtown scenarios and transporting thousands of people on their daily commute every week. They, are established, they have established a, gra uh, a ground game that will propel them into even larger markets in the future. Give it up for Steve. I'm also sharing the stage with Doug Song. Doug is the co-founder and CEO of Duo Security. Doug is an active member and mentor in southeastern Michigan and the startup community here, including initiatives such as a Two New Tech, Tech Brewery, Entrepreneur's Founder of Ann Arbor, and many others. Dual Security is one of the fastest growing cybersecurity providers in the world. Founded in 2010, Duo protects over 12,000 customers worldwide, including Etsy, Facebook, University of Michigan, I think I'm supposed to say go blue after that. Blue. <laughs> Yelp, Zillow, and more. Cisco recently announced its intent to acquire Duo for $2.35 for $2 billion. <laughs> Give it up for the. <laughs> so, so, fellas, let's, let's jump right in. Um, how would you both describe the entrepreneurship scene here in Detroit? And, and give me both the good and uh, room for improvement. Sure, happy to take a stab at it. I think the thing that really stands out to me about entrepreneurs in, in Detroit is that they're hungry. You know, they, they see what's going on in Silicon Valley and on the coasts, and they want a part of it. And they, you know, there's a bit of a chip on the shoulder saying like, we can do that too. They don't have a monopoly on, on invention and, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, entrepreneurship. We can do that too. Uh, when I think about the people that are here, they're, uh, they, they just really, work hard and they're they're good people and i think it's good to work in this region uh, i feel really good about working here i think places where we can improve is um, access to capital uh, especially from the midwest usually when we're raising money we have to go out to the coast particularly the west coast uh, and having more uh, education about uh, what venture capital is for both uh, investors and also employees of companies would help us when we want to recruit yeah, so <clears throat> my company's based in Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is only, only about 40 miles from here. Um, although, you know, everyone is supposed to wear uh, Detroit gear, and so we, uh, rather than choose one of the other sports teams, we, we made a, 
a shirt representing <laughs> the Detroit tech community, because that's our team. <laughs> but anyway, I our... Just give me this because I'm wearing a Cavs hat on stage. I didn't get that memo. <laughs> it's all good. But I think, you know, the... When I talk to my, my, my friends in California, all in Silicon Valley, you say, well, they, they, they kind of term it this way, why are you still there? Right, as if we're like the last ones to turn the lights off or something. You know, my explanation to them is, look, you know, there's, there's a bunch about Detroit and Southeast Michigan that's really special, right? And a lot of it comes down to culture and our history. If you think about, you know, California, California, I guess is what, a wine state, right, versus Michigan is a, a beer state. And I think there's a lot implied in kind of the ethics and the work ethic of what uh, people here aspire to. I think there's also this, uh, this, this notion that in California, you got lots and lots of tech companies, right? They're spinning up all the time. But in Michigan, we haven't generated a lot of tech companies. We've generated a lot of industries, very foundational industries, right? That touch all of our lives. You know, the birth of the American middle class was really out of all the industries that came out of Michigan. And so when we think about, again, the, the kind of entrepreneurship that's possible and what actually exists here uh, sort of in the water, I think a lot of it is, is kind of going back, to, hearkening back to a much, uh, much less crazy era right, of, of entrepreneurship where I think if you're on the coast, it's just, there's so much hype. Yeah. And there's the, the signal to noise ratio is very low. Yep. And you find a lot of folks that get caught up in all that, right? chasing each other's dreams right? versus really pursuing their own. And that's something I think I find very special here, where the kind of companies that you see that are here in Michigan are just going out, being bold, and having the courage right, to do things that are really quite different than what you might see on the coast. That's right. I agree. I, I heard you mention culture, and times are changing. The way we do business in this region is changing and evolving. That said, how important is culture as it relates to our ongoing um, progression in either one of you? Say, you know, at May, we, we hire for culture first. Uh, it's got to be a good cultural fit. We need people who are going to work hard and not get caught up in their own hype. We want people who are humble. That's one of our core values. And so we like getting Midwest, Midwest born and raised people. Actually, we've had really great success pulling people back from San Francisco, from New York. Uh, they've lived in these places. They're, they're, they're feeling the hype. They're feeling the, the, the vapidness sometimes of, of those places. and, and it, Coming back to Michigan, uh, it's a down-to-earth environment, and we, they know that when we tell them something, we mean it, and we're gonna we're gonna stick to our word. And so, uh, we want to have that reciprocated in, in our employees. And uh, I think we appreciate when there's there's other entrepreneurs in the region who who feel the same way, and we can work together and sort of uh, raise all boats. Well, I think you know, in the valley, particularly out out in California, you hear this term a lot that we we hire for cultural fit and so forth. You know, we, we sort of shoe all that at, 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 at Duo, and I think when we, when we talk about you know, what makes our company special and what's the culture that has driven the kind of success that we've had, it really comes down to, again, a, a culture of inclusion, right? And thinking about what we can draw from when we have so much diversity, right, in terms of industry, backgrounds, experiences, mental models, frameworks, right, to draw from here. And that's, that's something that I think is, is really quite unique about this place, where, again, there's, there's too much of a cargo cult mentality in certain places, like in like a valley, and and I think again, like every every place is about something, and when it comes down to what this place is about, like I say, New York is about money, and LA is about fame, and DC is about power. I guess San Francisco is about disruption, right? Yeah. Including, I don't know, disrupting things that shouldn't be disrupted, like <laughs> the social contract. I think here in in Detroit, and actually Ann Arbor specifically, right? It's about kind of two things: it's about a culture of learning. Right? That's what that's what the cottage industry of, of this place is. It's also, I think, the team, the team, the team, right? Go blue. You know, it's very much a, um, uh, an egoless yeah. right, sort of approach to building the teams and striving for shared goals. And I think that's something that is, is, uh, is one of the reasons why we, we recruit also, not just from Michigan, but more broadly, Midwest, Rust Belt, uh, CMU, you know, all the way up to Michigan Tech. You know, we, we have a, a great pool of amazing talent to draw from in this region. That I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm fine if, if the folks on the coast will call it flyover country and ignore it because it's our strategic advantage. That's right. So you guys started and grew your companies here in this region. What could you have used earlier uh, when you were in your startup stages that would have made life, life a little bit easier for you in, the, in those days? Let Doug start on this uh. one. 
Uh, well, I, I started my company when my wife was six months pregnant with her second child, so, you know. I, I think that's all on you, bro. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I don't know what, what would have helped me with that. But at any rate, uh, I, I think a few things. Number one, um, the founder networks here, <clears throat> while, while there are many founders, many great entrepreneurs, they're sometimes hard to find. I think we're doing a better job of actually figuring that out and trying to connect. You know, events like this, the true homecoming, are things that we need to be doing more broadly here locally ourselves yep. as well, right? And I think more and more you're starting to see that, right? Endeavor Detroit, connecting, right? Basically all these companies that are clicking at over 10 million in revenue. Or in Ann Arbor, we have what we call the New Tech Meetup, right? Which is literally hundreds of different companies and 6,000 members. These kind of networks, I think, it, it takes a village, right? Uh, and, and to actually be successful in business, you have to have a network, right, yeah. that you can draw from, where you know success, opportunity, talent help find its way to you, and, and those are the things I think that, again take a lot of intentional effort, right, to do here, just because there hasn't been as much of a history of it, and because again of a little bit of the geographic uh, distance. That's but true. but I think again those are things that again we're we're getting to be really much better at, and in a much more authentic way, mm -hmm. and sometimes what you find you know on the coast, which is important, which is important. Yeah. I mean, in some ways, May is still spinning up. We're still a seed series company, seed stage company. Yep. We're about a year and a half old, and so we're still like stumbling over our feet sometimes. And uh, we're, but but I think we started at a great time. And you know, as, as Doug mentioned, um, these meetups, uh, there's a lot of mobility focused uh, events going on, and we are able to take advantage of that. One thing that I wish. Um, that, that I could uh, push for a little bit more um, is sort of education of uh, some of the folks who work in this region about what the value of equity in a startup is. Um, our salaries are a little bit lower than they would get at, at the big three, mm -hmm. and uh, we need to do some education ourselves on what equity brings to the, to the table. And some of them are, are very risk averse because they've been taught to be that way. Sure. And so uh, just having more of this, this network, more of the education to say, it doesn't all have to be cash compensation. There is a way that you can be free to work on cr crazy awesome problems, be, uh, have a huge financial upside uh, at the at the cost of having a, you know a slightly lower salary and having people already know that is it would be a huge advantage. So we've got a room full of expats here, um, and we're definitely going to do some Q and A. But one thing I want to ask before we get to our first question is, what can expats do to support startups in our region? Well, I think um, participating in these kind of events. And coming to other showcases, right, where you, you get to see a lot of the innovation that happens at a very grassroots level, uh, I think is, is where a lot of change can be driven. You know, un unlike <clears throat> other things that happen here, you know, a lot of the, the tech innovation that's happening in, in this region truly is bottom up. Hmm. I mean, clearly there's a, there's a huge legacy of a $3 trillion auto, auto industry that's been here, headquartered in this region, for many, many decades. Yeah. That said, a lot of what's coming you know, it's not just that, right? You know, obviously, you know, companies like May Mobility and, and all this have a, have a tremendous heritage and talent pool and history to draw from. Companies like ours and cybersecurity, maybe not so much, <laughs> but at the same time, I think uh, you, you'll see that again. Uh, it, it is possible, mm -hmm. right, for a company like ours to get started and in eight years, right? Yeah. You know, uh, basically deliver billions in value. Yeah. And so I think uh, you have to, just like almost any great opportunity, you have to get on the ground floor and see, the th see all this stuff when it's, you know, it may look ridiculous, yeah. right? Two people and a talking duck, that's the company. Yeah. <laughs> but a, a lot of this is, is where it starts. That's and I right. think, you know, supporting um, a lot of what's happening, sponsoring a lot of what's happening mm. you know, on, at the grassroots level, I think is, is one of the most important things, help build a really strong community here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just echo that and say to sort of build that community out. If you're planning to come back, bring people back who are, uh, you know, convince them to come back. If you're planning to stay where you are, that's fine too if you've built a life there. But look out for each other. Look out for the companies that are here near your families. Uh, and if you know somebody who might want to come back, would be a good fit for May or Duo or any other, you know, startup, talk them up. Uh, you know, give us, give us contacts and, and really, you know, grow that web. It's sort of like an alumni network. Uh, you know, for U of M or MSU or Michigan Tech, you know, draw into those and really communicate with those people and, and tell them about the opportunities that are available because they might not know. Sure. And I think we've got a question. Mike on. Mike's <laughs> <I saw> on. <it. laughs> we've got time for one expat question. 
Hi, um, can you uh, provide some ways that people who live in Detroit, you know, right now can find out about these opportunities? Because a lot of, when we come back, a lot of what we get is that there's a lot of opportunities being brought in and people being brought in. But the people who are here, who've been here, aren't being, um, you know, involved and included in the, the, the amazing opportunities that are coming out of Detroit. Yeah, so I'll, I'll chime in on that a little bit too. I think that we've got to do a better job at making a centralized place for people to be able to find information because it's out there, but it's in silos. Um, I think one resource is like the biz grid, right? So if somebody is looking for um, accounting help, legal help, funding, whatever the case may be, they can go to bizgrid.com and be able to see those types of things. But even that um, is, is a tool that I think could be refreshed and, and be uh, up to date and be more real time because there's, there's constantly so many things that are happening. Um, and so to, to your point, we do need to do a better job as, as a city and as a region, right, and start thinking about us as one ecosystem, regardless if you're in Ann Arbor, Detroit, or, or other surrounding cities, of how we get that communication out there for people to be able to, to go through and, and find those things. I think uh, Mishapreneur um, is another um, a platform Platform that, that people can check out as well. Yeah. Maybe just to follow on. I think I think it's it's almost been we're in this kind of funny adolescence, right, of, of the tech community in this in this region, where there's almost too much stuff, in, in, but in a lot of pockets, right? Yeah. Where I mean, I remember I think a year or two ago there was Detroit Startup Week, Detroit Entrepreneurship Week, <laughs> and uh, Tech Week Detroit, like all one after another, right, in like one month. You know, we couldn't yeah, figure this out. But you know that's that's kind of what's happening, right? A lot of sort of spinning up and to find kind of the, the hitching post where everyone kind of can you know, group around here in Detroit is, is is a little bit difficult. But it's just because there's so much stuff going on. I think in Ann Arbor, which is much smaller, an event like A2 New Tech, you'll see basically everybody right show up every month on a regular basis. And so here, I just heard that there was a new event that just spun up called Startup Detroit. And if you look at, look at look that up on Meetup, it is again one of these grassroots startup showcases where they're seeking to you know sh showcase five new companies every month. Now those are the kind of things that even at my stage of, of our company, right, we're, we're you know 700 plus people, I still do every month because number one, it's where you can draw right talent from. Yep. Not, not all these companies succeed, and when they don't, having a, a place again where where folks can come and um, be successful and then go out and try again. It's important, <clears throat> and so we have to participate as a community in the success of all these startups, but it's also a place where you can go and just meet everybody. And more than anything else, you know, making those relationships, um, like we say, you know, those meetups are not a good meetup if you come, come and met a bunch of people. Yeah. They're good events if you come and you've introduced a bunch of people. Because it's the mesh of those relationships that actually creates a community, and, and it's, it's when people actually care about each other, and, and um, it's more than just a transactional kind of thing. That's right. That we see all, you know, see all the help, you know, um, uh, build up for folks in a way that's inclusive. That's right, that's right. And Startup Week is another good, good resource. It's a week-long um, meetups, um, speak, um, speaking engagements and things of that nature where you can get a ton of information about what, what's going on in the system. That happens every summer. Very good. We have one more question from Michelle and then we're going to wrap this session up. So thanks everybody. So I guess um, uh, going on topic basically regarding getting the information to the people who need the information to know what the resources are sorry um, so that people get the information and more broadly have you considered going into the schools and has the city considered creating one database for all of those resources I know it's a big problem in New York too, getting the information to the people who need it and now we have so many channels you know how who are you reaching with what channel yeah, I can't really speak on behalf of the schools in particular, but I know with the city, the city is definitely doing some some things. Um, uh, the DEGC in, in, in particular, uh, which is a subsidiary of, of the city, they actually own and manage the biz grid. Um, and so there are some, some citywide initiatives that are going on where we're trying to get that information out there. But to your point, I think that um, that can be strengthened. Um, and I do think the schools is an, kind of an untapped market in trying to um, get those young people to think more entrepreneurial um, as, as they are very naive to the world and have a bunch of crazy ideas. It's, it's better to, to get them young um, and start thinking about innovation. Um, but I, I think that that's an area that, that we can definitely improve. Yeah, I think one thing you're also seeing is that you know the, the network of support organizations, accelerators and so forth, and they're multiple. There's folks like uh, you know, Tech, Tech Stars Mobility, Tech Town, right in Midtown, uh, Generator, VFA, 
I mean, all these different organizations provide, basically comprise a network right, of, of help uh, for, for folks. Uh, they're looking to spin things up from the ground up. And there's many entry points into that. And so I think what you find is that actually, you know, here in Detroit, people are good neighbors. Right? They help each other find their way to these things. And that's where, again, that's, that's what the, uh, the nature of the community here is. There doesn't have to be necessarily a central place where you go kind of look it up as a database. Uh, you know, you, you enter a place like, like we're in a building called uh, the James C. Madison building where Bamboo Detroit is, is hosted. And Bamboo is a, is a co-working facility that is almost a, a community hub, right, of activity. But you sort of guarantee that if you have a question about where to find anything in Detroit, you show up at Bamboo and someone's going to have the answer for you. That's right. And I think, you know, those kinds of community initiatives um, and the way that that operates here in Detroit, I think it's really truly, truly something special. But it's going to take, uh, you know, time right, for that to really develop, right? To the right. Next level. We got yeah. pictures of my company. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I just add that, you know, we, May Mobility, we're 45 people, 47 people now. We have one recruiter, right? So he has limited bandwidth. And so we are really leaning hard on those network effects. We are in Lawrence Tech. We're talking to people at Wayne State, U of M Dearborn, as well as, you know, uh, Michigan, Michigan State, Michigan Tech, Carnegie Mellon. Uh, you know, we're trying to put our feelers out as far as we can go, but we do have limited bandwidth. And so, again, any help that we can get from our network, any word of mouth that we can get, that's how we're going to get the word out because we just, we just can't. Well, I would love to shout our, our name from the rooftops, but my voice gets hoarse. So. <laughs> Very cool. Give these gentlemen a round of applause. Thank you, guys.